What is up, Refuge students? How are you guys doing? Welcome to Refuge Online. Woo! We are so excited that you are here with us tonight. We are so excited to start on this new platform. So we hope you guys are excited to dive into God's word. We're gonna be having some music, sharing a devotion. So we hope that you guys go all in. Treat this like a real refuge service. It's weird that we're not all together in this house, but just because we're not here doesn't mean that we can't all be together and learn from the Lord. So dial in, press in, but we're just so glad you're here. Welcome to Refuge Online. Welcome. Refuge. I'm so excited to be able to speak some truth to your life and share God's word. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's so weird. We're honestly in a pretty crazy season right now, and I'm really sad, honestly, that the chairs behind me are empty. I love Wednesday nights when we all get to be together in this house, but I'm excited that we get to connect in a different way. I know this is definitely not the platform we're usually on, but I'm excited that you got to tune in. So I challenge you to just press in. Have a notebook. Have out your Bible. 
bring your sibling that maybe never comes to refuge to watch with you because I think God really does have something special for us if we trust him. So first of all, just thank you so much for tuning in. I'm excited to talk about what God has really laid on my heart, I think, for us. So what I'd love to do to start off is I'd love to pray, and then I'd love to read our passage, and then we're going to dive in. So I hope that you can press in. Let me pray for us. God, I just thank you so much for tonight, and I thank you for the students of refuge and that we get to be together in a different way. God, I don't know why you've brought us together this way, but I know that you're good when our circumstances are not. So I pray you'd bless me as I talk. I pray that you would just give me your words. I pray for my friend on the other side of the screen, God, that they would be able to see you in a new way, that they would trust you, God, and they maybe would be able to learn something in a new way. And I love you. I praise you. Thank you so much for who you are and all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, let's get started. If you have a Bible or you have an iPad or a phone, open up your Bible to Psalm chapter 73. When I was really praying about what I felt like I was supposed to speak on, this is the first thing that really came to my head. So if you want to open up your Bible and follow along, I'm going to be reading Psalm 73, verses 23 through 28. And then I'm going to walk us through each of the verses and see what God has to say to us. So let's get started. Psalm chapter 73, verse 23 through 28 says, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. So what I really would love for us to press into tonight is talking about how God is our strength when everything else is trying to be our strength right now, right? But God is our strength. So let's dial in. If you're on a couch, if you're on your bed, let's get started. Psalm chapter 73, verse 23, let's read it again. says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. So the first question is, who are these people that are talking about? It says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. Who's the I? Who's you? So the I is talking about our speaker. The writer of this passage of scripture, this psalm, is a man named Asaph. He's a man that wrote a lot of our different psalms. So he's our speaker for tonight. But he is saying, I, Asaph, am continually with you talking about God. God is the you throughout all of our passage. So first off, he says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. If someone's continually with you, it's not something that happens by accident. Am I right? Your best friend at your school who walks with you from every class period to the next one is not continually with you on accident. They made a choice, right? In this passage, we see that Asaph makes a choice. I am continually with you. He chooses daily to be with God. Then it continues. It says, you hold me with my right hand, Asaph's right hand. Whenever it talks about right hand in the Bible, it's not just an accident by saying, oh, I'm going to choose you by your right hand. It's not like he could just change this out and say left hand or just say hand in general. Right hand or someone being on someone's right is used consistently throughout the Bible. I did a study of some of the ways that they use right hand in the Bible, and there are a couple different ways that they use it. But right hand consistently is used throughout scripture to be a synonym with God's goodness, God's strength, and also a blessing. So by Asaph saying that you guide me with your right hand, that's saying that not only is he being led, he continually is with the Lord, but he's also with him and receives God's goodness, his strength, and his blessing. This is obviously someone that is very close to the Lord. Let's read the next verse. 23 verse 24 says, You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. So Asaph, who wrote this, was obviously close to the Lord. Again, kind of like being continually with someone. If someone's guiding you, like let's say you're at a museum and you're on a tour, the guide is someone very important. The guide isn't someone who's just like, um, I think we'll go this way and then we'll go this way. The person who's a guide knows the ins and outs of something and is taking you on the best way to see something, right? If I go to a museum, I want a guide that actually knows the layout, knows the things to talk about, and has an answer to my questions. So by Asaph saying that you guide me with your counsel, he is close enough to the Lord to hear what he has to say. He trusts him enough to follow where he leads. And when God gives a command, he actually follows it. But then it continues. It says, you guide me with your counsel. Whenever it talks about counsel in the Bible, it's usually talking about friends. But in this instance, the counsel is God's word. By saying you guide me with your counsel, he's being guided by what God has to say. What God says leads him. 
That's even true for us in our lives. This book, the Bible, is the thing that guides us. Let's see what the next verse says. The next verse is my favorite verse in the whole passage. It says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. So he talks about in the earlier passages that he's continually with God, that God guides him with his right hand, and that he is received into glory. But this passage talking about saying, whom do I have in heaven but you? It's talking about how no one else is really going to be there for Asaph continually. I don't know if you've kind of already noticed this with this just virus outbreak that's happened. Nothing in our life is sure and consistent. But in this passage, Asaph completely trusts in the Lord. Whom do I have in heaven but you? Who do you really have? I know a lot of us have a best friend, a parent, a sibling that we love and that we trust, and that's amazing. But are they really there for you always? Always. Every day, every moment, every hour, every second. I'm not trying to be rude, but I got a funny feeling the answer is no. But the only one who truly can be there for us continually is the Lord. He's the one that's safe, secure, steadfast, continual, and faithful. And then the verse continues and says, and there's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. When you realize that you can truly know God, that you can have a relationship with him, that he's all that you have, why would you desire anything else? Why want a relationship or a friendship or this or that when you can truly know, desire, and love and have God? Why would you want anything else? So because he knows that he only has the Lord and because he knows that he's the only thing I really need to desire, he's able to say with confidence, verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My flesh and my heart may fail. The things of this world are going to fail me. I don't know if you've kind of noticed this already, but people's flesh are failing them. Their hearts, their dreams, their goals, they're failing but he continues and says, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Whenever someone thinks it's their strength, that means it's the thing that keeps them going, that they implicitly trust. I love my family, right? I love my family. I love my friends. I love my dreams, my goals. Those things really aren't the things that are going to be with me forever, the things that I can really hold on to, that I can put my life on, my weight on, I can bet my life on. None of those things can, as much as I kind of wish that I could. The only thing that really is my strength forever is the Lord, right? I don't even know if you're seeing now, but we have all these big plans, right? Oh, I love this extracurricular. I love this club. None of those are really going to stay like the Lord will. So not only is God our strength that we can totally rely on, but he's also our portion forever, this part of the passage is so powerful. If something is your portion, that means the amount that you get so that you can have enough. For example, you're at Thanksgiving dinner. Who doesn't love Thanksgiving, right? You get mashed potatoes, you get a little turkey, maybe you get some gravy on it depending on who you are, right? Green bean casserole, macaroni and cheese, hash brown casserole, whatever else your family has. Whatever's on your plate is your portion. That's what you think is going to satisfy. But how often do we at Thanksgiving go back for seconds and thirds and fourths because it never really does? In this passage with Jesus saying, or with God saying rather, that he is our portion forever, that means God is enough to satisfy for the long term. God isn't, doesn't want to just satisfy your soul while the coronavirus outbreak is out. God wants to satisfy your soul every day, every hour, every minute, every second, from now until eternity. Every day. He is enough. He's the only thing that satisfies. He's the only thing that's consistent and safe and secure. When our world is kind of going crazy, he's the only one that truly satisfies. So he's not only our strength, he gets us through it, but he also satisfies us and fills us. We can continue on in verse 27. It says, for behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. Sadly, people that don't know Jesus are not going to be with him forever. And they haven't chosen, as we've seen in the passage, to make him their refuge. But we see some beautiful and honestly a highlight as we continue at the end of the passage. It says in verse 28, but for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Guys, this is the time to be near to God. I've had so many conversations in this room with students talking about, how's your quiet time? What's God been teaching you? And I've gotten their response, no shade. Oh, I've just been a little busy. 
I've been busy with school, finals. Oh, I, I, I'm in this new club. I'm playing this sport. You won't believe what's going on with my debate club, with the band that I'm in. And all of those things are awesome, and I'm not mad about those ever. But isn't it kind of often that we put kind of an excuse? Oh, that's why I haven't been in the Word. I've been busy with those things. We're kind of at the place with our hands kind of empty. What else do you have to do? Why not now press in? Why not now choose to be near to God? This is the time to be in his word. You've got no excuse. You've got nothing to distract you. Only thing distracting us right now, I guess, would be the news and our sibling upstairs. But why not take now as our time to really be in his word, right? Again, the passage, though, hits on the fact that we have to make the choice, the choice to make God our refuge. The second part of the verse says, I have made the Lord God my refuge. Right now, it's easy for us to want our refuge to be in the news, the medical field, what our parents tell us, right? The amount of groceries we have in our kitchen. But none of those things are really going to be a refuge. The only thing, the only thing that really is a refuge for us in this time has to be God. And you have to make the choice, the daily, the hourly, the minute, the second choice, every second. God is my refuge right now in this moment. God is my refuge tomorrow. You have to make the choice. And at the very end of the passage, it says that I may tell of all your works. Guys, this is the time when everyone's kind of looking for answers. Everyone is looking to the news, to the medical field, to their social media, to the amount of groceries in their kitchen to make them feel safe and secure and that maybe they have a plan. But I don't know if you guys have noticed, none of us have a plan. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow, two days from now, a month from now, right? A lot of us honestly have a lot of canceled plans, a lot of questions, and a lot of things that have made us upset. I, I can totally relate to that. My seniors that don't know a lot of answers, I'm a senior in college too, I totally get that. My friends that had trips and plans and things going on, I totally empathize, I'm in the same boat. But guys, this is the time that even though these bad things have happened, we know that God works all things together for good. We just learned that at Refuge Connect, right? The perspective, God has a plan. Even when it feels like he doesn't, even when I don't see it, he's working. So now's the time to tell people about it. This is the time where maybe your friend in your A push class that follows you on Instagram might actually listen to what you have to say. They might not have listened about your group project, but they might listen now, right? Your friend that you go and ride the bus with every day might actually listen and say, that's that kid that always goes and talks about church. Maybe they really have some answers that I don't have. Because the thing is, we do. The answers are all right here in God's word. Jesus loves us. Jesus has a relationship and wants to have a relationship with us. Jesus came on this earth and lived a perfect life and died for our sins so that we can know him, right? And that's what he wants. This is a time to proclaim the good news, and the good news is Jesus. And so my challenge for you, my saved friends who are watching, do you really believe and act like God is the strength of your heart and your portion forever? Are you actually using this time to be in his word? I know it's easy to binge watch that show you've been dying to watch or to do this other thing, but why not press into his word and let him be the strength when it kind of feels like nothing else is? God is your strength. Do you really act like it? And then my friends that aren't saved, maybe you just clicked on this because your friend shared it. You have no idea who I am. You don't even know what I've been talking about, but I keep saying that name, Jesus. Jesus is God's son, and he's the best thing that's ever happened. Jesus came on this earth and died on the cross for your sins. All of us have sinned. That means that all of us have made mistakes. We've lied. We've cheated. We've stolen. We've done things that we shouldn't do. I don't know if you believe that, but I know for a fact I have. But Jesus came to this earth to die on the cross for your sins, to forgive you, forgive you for all the bad things that you've done. You don't have to live in shame and guilt anymore. God loves you. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of that sin to save your soul, and to give you a gift of eternal life that you can be with him forever. Friend, I want to let you know that accepting Jesus as your Savior is the best thing that you can do. Because Jesus isn't just a crutch that's going to help you get through this coronavirus outbreak. Jesus transforms you from being dead in sin to alive in Christ so that we can have life and purpose beyond the virus, beyond all these things. God wants to be our strength now and forever. So I'm going to ask you to do something that's probably weird. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I know that's random because you're watching a video on how am I going to ever know, but just close your eyes. I'll close mine too. And my question that I'd like to ask you is, do you have a relationship with Jesus? 
Maybe you're watching this and you're like, I just don't know, but she keeps saying that name, Jesus. Friend, I want to let you know Jesus loves you and he has a plan for you and he wants you to accept that gift of salvation. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lead you in what's called the sinner's prayer. There's nothing special about this prayer. It's not magical. It doesn't make everything all better as much as I kind of wish that it would, right? But by accepting Jesus as your Savior, you can be forgiven, you can have life after death, and you can have purpose. So if you say, Hannah, I want to do that, I want to accept that gift, I want you to repeat after me these words in your own home on the other side of the screen. And again, there's nothing special about these words, but these words... If you believe him, if you accept him and you believe him with all your heart, we'll forgive you. Well, Jesus will forgive you of your sins and save you. So let's pray. Jesus, I am a sinner and I need you. Jesus, I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to save my soul and give me the gift of eternal life. Jesus, I want to live for you and I want you to give me purpose. Please save me. Thank you so much, Jesus, for your gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer on the other side of the screen, then Jesus just saved you of your sins. I now have a new brother or sister in Christ, and Jesus has a plan and a purpose for you. Friend, I know it's probably crazy accepting Jesus, but Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to you, and Jesus loves you. He has a plan for you, and he trusts you. My saved friends, my refuge fam that just watched, guys, I hope that you were encouraged. And I hope that you were challenged. Are you actually living like Jesus is the strength of your heart and your portion forever? We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're excited about what the Lord is still going to do in our house. So please keep following us. Keep liking, sharing with your friends. God wants to do something in your life. Right after this video, we're going to post on our Insta story two things. One, how can we be praying for you? And two, what decisions did you make? If you're one of the people on the screen that accepted Jesus as your savior, we want to be praying for you. Let us know. Type in. Fill us in. We want to be praying for you and encouraging you. And other friends, if you just have prayer requests, you still have questions, you still have things you don't know, please write those as well. We want to be there for you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I believe this with all my heart as much as I believed it a year ago. I believe it now and I believe it forever. The best is yet to come. God is our strength, he's our portion, and he is not taken off guard by this. So I love you guys, God bless you, and be strong. The best is yet to come.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Oh. 